back to Season 7 of the Warrior Way News. I'm Jaden Jordan. And I'm Alexis Volkers. And now over to Ashley for an FCCLA update. Pink Out Night will be at the home volleyball game on October 7th at 7 p.m. Croft and FCCLA sold shirts as part of a fundraiser for Camp Koholo, and they will also be doing a raffle of items donated by businesses and members of the community at the game. Now let's fly on over to Araya with an excellent chicken article. Hello, all you chicken lovers. Quick joke. Where do tough chickens come from? Hard-boiled eggs. Our top three chicken farmers in the school are clucking around looking for some scraps to pick up. Riley Sprockle, a senior at Crofton High, has a cluck ton of chickens. Riley sells his eggs, so if you're ever looking for some excellent eggs, check him out. His favorite breed of chicken is the beautiful Brahma. Our second chickadee is Elizabeth Wortman. Elizabeth is a sophomore this year. She takes her chickens to fair. She shows them in 4-H and FFA. Her favorite breeds of chicken are the Polish and modern game chickens. Additionally, Elizabeth names her chickens. One of her favorite names of her hens is Paquito Tito. The last chick that goes crazy for chickens is myself, Aran Nielsen. I'm a junior this year. Like Riley, my favorite breed is the Brahma. The reason why I have chickens is to sell the eggs, and we have them just for pure entertainment. Along with Elizabeth, I also name my chickens. This one is Shelly, and this one is Skylar. We all agree that the most aggressive breed of chicken is definitely the old English game. We are all like-minded about the same egg layer breed too, the leghorn hens. Riley started hatching out his chickens in sixth grade. He kept raising chickens just to start his own little business, and it was successful. Elizabeth first got started dealing with chickens in first grade. After they hatched out, she took them to the fair and ended up winning, so she kept going on from there, and she's still showing them every year. I first started liking chickens when I got attacked by our monstrous rooster, Elvis, so I've been raising them and hatching them out since. Before we fly to the coop, here's another joke to send you off. What do you call a chicken that crosses the road, rolls in the dirt, crosses the road again, and then rolls in the dirt again. A dirty double-crossing chicken. That was clucking hilarious. Yeah, speaking of chickens, I've got to find a chick to ask to homecoming. How about that hot Brahma chick, Skylar? Ha ha, very funny. Thanks. I'll check out the homecoming court instead. This year, the 2021 homecoming candidates were elected by the student body through a Google form. The freshman attendants are Jack Miller and Lexi Weevilhaus. Jack is the son of Jamie Miller and Mark Miller. He is associated with football and wrestling. Lexi is the daughter of Joe and Kelly Weevilhaus. She competes in basketball, volleyball, and track. The sophomore attendants are Nolan Babcock and Hannah Schiefer. Nolan is the son of Jason and Tammy Babcock. He participates in basketball, golf, and band. Hannah is the daughter of Nancy and Carl Schiefer. She is involved in volleyball, track, and one act. The junior attendants are Ty Tramp and Rebecca Leader. Ty is the son of Jamie and Chad Tramp. He competes in football, wrestling, track, and FFA. Rebecca is the daughter of Gary and Karen Leader. She plays volleyball and basketball. Rebecca is also part of NHS, HAL, and the, is the class president for the junior class. The senior royalty candidates are Alexis Folkers, daughter of Becky and Jeff Folkers. She participates in basketball and volleyball. She is also a part of NHS, student council, and the yearbook. Ella Roggi, daughter of Mark and Annette Roggi, competes in volleyball and basketball. She is part of NHS Student Council and is the senior class president. Kira Altwine, daughter of Chad and Karen Altwine, runs cross country and takes part in track. She is also part of NHS Student Council and Chorus. Jaden Jordan, daughter of Shauna Michelle Widener Jordan, is involved in basketball, volleyball, and track. She is also part of FFA Student Council and Yearbook. James Allen is the son of Tom and Wanda Allen. He plays football, basketball, and track. He is also on student council and NHS. Rowdy Heggie is the son of Brooks and Summer Heggie. He partakes in cross country, speech, one act, chorus, HAL, and journalism. William Poppy is the son of Jay and Deanne Poppy. He is involved in football, wrestling, and track. He is also a member of NHS, student council, and the senior class vice president. Jackson Weevilhouse is the son of Tracy and Tom Weevilhouse. He takes part in football, basketball, and track. Homecoming coronation will be held Sunday, September 26th at 6 o'clock in the evening at the football field. Monday is Hawaiian Day. Tuesday, dress like a dad day. Wednesday is Western Day.
Thursday is Hobo versus Hollywood Day. And Friday will be Spirit Day. With 13 runners achieving season bests, the Crofton girls and boys cross country teams competed well at the O'Neill Cross Country Invitational on Friday, September 17th. For the girls varsity team, sophomore Jordan Arn placed first with a time of 1916, beating out the competition once again. Freshman Riley Arns ran a personal record of 2148, placing 10th. Senior Kira Altwine placed 13th, sophomore Elizabeth Wartman placed 18th, and senior Emma Newhoffen placed 42nd and ran a course best, and senior Ashley Tramp placed 45th. Juniors Ariel Lammers and Kayla O'Connor placed 6th and 7th respectively on the girls junior varsity team. Overall, many of the girls accomplished season bests on this course, and the girls varsity team placed third. Leading the boys varsity team was senior Austin Gunther, who ran a personal record and placed eighth with a time of 18.09. Sophomore Zach Arns placed 33rd, senior Roy Knapp placed 43rd, sophomore Carter Gunther ran a personal record of 21.58, placing 50th, and senior Rowdy Heggie ran a personal record of 23.12, placing 56th. Luke Caperer, the sole runner for the boys' junior varsity team at this race, placed 15th. In boys' varsity and junior varsity, every runner at this meet achieved a season best and a course best, and the boys' varsity team placed 7th overall. Now for a volleyball update with Jade Nylers. Thanks, Carly. The Crofton Lady Warriors shut out the Boone Central Cardinals on Tuesday, September 14th. Senior Ella Raghi led the team with 10 kills and 4 ace serves. Senior Jaden Jordan followed with 7 kills and 7 digs. And junior Caitlin Gunther had 6 kills. Senior Alexis Fulkers also contributed to the team with 26 assists, 12 digs, and 6 kills. The Lady Warriors traveled to Pierce for a volleyball game on Thursday, September 16th. The Warriors took the second set but ended up falling to the Blue Jays 3-1. Folkers helped the team with 33 assists and 19 digs. With her 18th dig of the night, she achieved 1,000 digs for her high school career. Raghi led the team in kills with 14, followed by Jordan with 11. The Lady Warriors earned third place at a volleyball tournament in Stanton on Saturday, September 18th. The Crofton Warriors faced off against Arlington. With the Warriors' 2-0 start, they moved on to play Battle Creek. They fell short, losing 0-2 to Battle Creek and played Ponca in the third place match. The Lady Warriors came out victorious against the Ponca Indians and solidified their third place finish. The Crofton Lady Warriors will host a triangular on Tuesday, September 28th. Now let's toss it over to Alexis for a football report. The Crofton Warriors started out strong against the Aquinas Monarchs with senior Jimmy Allen scoring the only touchdown in the first quarter. However, the tide changed and the Monarchs took over the game and defeated the Warriors 22-14. After the first quarter, the Monarchs' defense picked up by not letting the Warriors score again until the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, the Monarchs' offense was starting to click, scoring 10 points in the second quarter. Both the Warriors and Monarchs were held scoreless in the third quarter. The Warriors' defense was led by senior Jackson Weevil House with eight tackles and senior William Poppy with seven. To start off the fourth quarter, senior Allen scored a touchdown to put the Warriors up 14-10, to 10, but there was no stopping the Monarchs after that. Senior Michael Andel ran 65 yards to give the Monarchs the lead 16-14. Once the Monarchs got the ball back, Andel ran another touchdown for 37 yards, nearly clinching the victory for his team. The Warriors tried to fight back from this 8-point deficit in the final minutes. During Warriors' last drive, senior Jaden Eilers suffered a career-ending injury. He was running the ball, and one of the Monarchs landed on his leg, resulting in a broken fibula. There was no coming back for the Warriors after that. The Monarchs had 310 total rushing yards and the Warriors had only 240. Since there were so many penalties, the Warriors were unable to make any progress. The Warriors had seven different penalties resulting in 60 yards lost in comparison to only 20 yards lost by the Monarchs. The Crofton Warriors take on Takema Herman Tigers this Friday, September 24th in Takema. Now let's swing it over to a golf update. That was a close one. Junior Araya Nielsen drove her way to 11th place with a score of 103, her new personal best leading the Crofton girls golf team at the Battle Creek Golf Invitational on September 16th. The girls golf team finished 8th out of 11 teams on the Evergreen Hill golf course after playing 18 holes. Additionally, freshman Madeline Lecker placed 29th with a score of 123. 
Francine Zueta placed 41st with a score of 140, junior Paris Walter placed 42nd with a score of 142, and sophomore April Gunther placed 44th with a score of 145. The Crofton Girls Golf Team is set to travel to Cedar View Country Club on Saturday, September 25th for the Laurel Concord Coleridge Golf Invitational. Saturday, September 18th, I attended the Nebraska-Oklahoma college football game in Norman, Oklahoma. It started with an eight-hour trip the day before with my mom, my dad, my brother, and my uncle. I woke up Saturday with a prediction of the game being 30, Oklahoma 30, and Nebraska 27. The actual score did not fall too short of that. The ranked third Oklahoma Sooners defeated the Cornhuskers 23 to 16. Being a huge Nebraska fan, I had faith in them. They worked hard defensively by holding the Sooners to 23 points. The first time since 2018, the Sooners have been held to 30 points or less. Even though we took the loss, I believe Nebraska made the Sooners look overrated. I'm glad I had a opportunity to attend this game and look forward to attending more games in the future. Nebraska's next game will be on September 25th at Michigan State against the Spartans at 6 p.m. Go Big Red! On Friday, September 24th, picture retakes will take place at school. The Crofton Warrior football team will travel to Takema Herman for their game at 7 o'clock. On Saturday, September 25th, the girls' varsity golf team will go to Laurel Conquer Coleridge for their meet at 9 a.m. The girls' junior high volleyball team will travel to Battle Creek for, ter for their tournament at 9 a.m. On Sunday, September 26th, homecoming coronation will take place at Crofton High School down at the football field starting at 6 p.m. Monday, September 27th, junior high boys football will take on Ponca at home at 4 o'clock. Freshmen and sophomore boys will have a football game in Pierce at 5 p.m. Girls JV Volleyball will travel to Norfolk for the Norfolk Catholic Triangular starting at 5 p.m. Tuesday, September 28th, the girls varsity volleyball team will host a triangular at home starting at 5 p.m. Wednesday, September 29th, there is FFA District judging in Hardington. Thursday, September 30th, the girls golf team will have a varsity conference meet at home starting at 10 a.m. Junior High, JV, and Varsity Cross Country Invitational in stand at 4 p.m. The volleyball team will have a freshman, JV, and varsity game at home against Wakefield at 5.30, then 6.30, and 7.30. And on October 1st, we have homecoming. I'm Ashley Tramp. And I'm Jay Nylers, and this has been the Warrior Way News.